Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this example. So here we have two matrix spaces xd and yd dash. f is a function from x to y. We have to prove that function f is continuous on x if and only if f inverse b interior is subset of f inverse b whole interior. And this is true for each subset b of y. Getting so here if and only if condition. So that's why we will assume one part first. We will assume f is continuous first and we will prove this one and after that we will go for its converse part. So let us start. I am going to consider, let me write here, assume that f from x to y is a continuous function. Okay, So it is a continuous function that means it is continuous at each and every point of this domain x. Okay, And what we have to prove, let me write. To prove that f inverse b interior is subset of f inverse b whole interior and this is true for each subset b of y. So what will I do? I will take any arbitrary subset b of y and for that we will prove this relation. Okay, So let us take let b subset of y. So th then to prove that, let me write what we have to prove. We have to prove this relation that is f inverse b interior subset of f inverse b whole interior. OK, so let me draw the diagram simultaneously. So concept will be clear to you. This is a matrix space xd we have. This is another matrix space y d dash we have. We have a function f from x to y. We are considering any subset b of y and for that set b we have to prove this relation we have to prove first set is subset of second so in mathematics we have a very common technique to prove this thing we take any arbitrary point from the first set and we prove that it is in second set then we say the first set is subset of second so let us take one point from this set so let a belongs to f inverse b interior okay so i have taken any arbitrary point a let me show in this diagram. So here we have considered B. So inside it, you will have B interior. Interior of uh, B is B interior. If you take its inverse, that means F inverse. So we will have some set here. So we are calling it as F inverse B interior. So we have to prove that it is subset of this relation we have to prove. So I'm taking one point from this set A. Okay, let us take F on this side. Then what will you have? If you shift f inverse on this side, we will have f of a belongs to b interior. So let me show this same thing in the diagram. A we have, if you operate f, we will have a point here, f of a belongs to b interior. Actually, b interior means set of all interior points of b. f of a belongs to b interior, it means f of a is an interior point of b it is an interior point of b so when we say it is an interior point if it is possible to draw a ball around this point which entirely lies inside set b then we say it is an interior point so f of a is an interior point so we can draw ball around f of a which is subset of b so therefore we write let me write here therefore there exists some radius r greater than 0. But see here I will take epsilon since we have a continuous function. So epsilon will be useful if I take here. So there exists instead of r I am writing epsilon greater than 0 such that such that ball around this f of a with radius epsilon f of a epsilon is subset of it is subset of b getting it is subset of in this diagram I have shown subset of b this is so much important thing so i am calling it as one so we are assume we have already assumed one part that is function is continuous so that thing also we are going to use now we have we have f is continuous on x it means function is continuous at each and every point of x so therefore it is continuous at point a also since a is also one of them so therefore, f is continuous at a. 
So we are familiar with epsilon delta definition of continuous function. That definition I'm going to use. So that definition says for given epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero. But the epsilon already we have got. So I'm going to mention for above epsilon greater than zero. Let me write here for above epsilon greater than zero, there exist delta greater than zero such that so we have a definition d of x a less than delta implies d dash of f of x f of a less than epsilon. But same definition can be written in this way. Let me write here directly ball with center f of uh, with c. I should write such that f of ball with center a radius delta subset of ball with center f of a radius epsilon okay so let me call it as 2 so uh, let me write here the actual definition is d of x a less than delta implies d dash of f of x f of a less than epsilon this is the actual definition of continuity but the same definition can be written in this way in previous videos already we have seen all these three definitions are equivalent so that's why I'm using this one. See, can you uh, combine one and two? See here the left hand side ball with center f of a uh, radius epsilon. The same thing we have got in the right hand side of two. So let us combine. So that means a, a subset of b and b subset of c. Then we can say a subset of c. So that relation I'm going to use. Make a screenshot of it. Then I will go further. So from one and two, let me write from 1 and 2 f of b a delta which is subset of this ball and this ball is subset of b so that's why we can write directly write this is subset of b right see uh, let us shift f on that side so therefore ball with center a radius delta getting subset of f inverse b so that's why we get a ball. We got a ball which is subset of f inverse b, right? So let me show here f inverse a, a we here have here. So we got a ball around a with radius delta, which is subset of f inverse b. So we can declare that a is an interior point. So this is a definition of interior point. So therefore, let me mention a is an interior point of f inverse b the same thing we can write in this way a belongs to f inverse b interior okay so do you remember we had taken point a from this set f inverse b interior and finally we proved a is in that set so therefore we can say this subset is uh, this set is subset of that one so let me mention so therefore we can write therefore f inverse b interior subset of f inverse b whole interior getting and see b is also any arbitrary subset of y so that's why this relation is true for every subset b of y so in this way we proved this one getting so this relation is true for every subset b of y so now we have to prove the converse part that means we are going to assume this relation is true or this relation holds and we have to prove that the function f is continuous on x okay make a screenshot of it then i will go further so i have written some part of converse part of this getting so we have we have assumed this relation uh, holds and we have to prove that the function is continuous on x that means we have to prove the function is continuous at each and every point of x let me show in this diagram getting yes so this is matrix space xd and this is another matrix space y d dash we have a function f from x to y so we have this relation holds and we have to prove that the function is continuous on each and every point of x so there is one way that we can take any arbitrary point and we can show function f is continuous at that point so a is any arbitrary so that's why it is continuous each and every point of x so we have epsilon delta definition to prove that thing as well as we have a sequential criteria also that means if any sequence xn converges to x then f of xn converges to f of a 
okay then we then also we can say the function f is continuous at a there is one more result we have seen that if you have any open set g in codomain that means y d dash and if its inverse image f inverse g is open in domain then also we can say the function f is continuous on x so this result i'm going to use to prove the function f is continuous on x actually these are if and only if results so you can consider them as a definitions of continuous function also so let us do that i'm going to consider one open set g in y let 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 me write g b and open set in y d dash getting so g is an open set in y d dash so there is one result which we have already seen if you have any set is open then g is equal to g interior okay so let me mention the result is a is open if and only if a is equal to a interior okay if and only if result we have so because g is open so we can write this thing for g so this is so much important thing so let me call it as star but see basically g is subset of y here g is subset of y and we have already assumed one thing for each and every subset of y so g is also any subset of y so this relation is true for this g also so let us write the same thing for g then by our assumption by our assumption see let me write by our assumption what can we write simply at a place of b we have to write g nothing else okay so let me write f inverse g interior is subset of f inverse g whole interior but see our star says g and g star are equal so here we can replace g interior sorry g and g interior are equal so therefore we can replace g interior by g so therefore what can we say f inverse g subset of f inverse g interior okay but see there is one common thing that is a interior is subset of a interior interior of any set is obviously a subset of the original set but here we are getting exactly opposite to that let me mention but basically interior of any set is subset of that set f inverse g so we can easily understand interior that means which lies in, inside so interior of f inverse g is subset of f inverse g okay so therefore therefore let us combine these two f inverse g is subset of the interior of that set and interior of f inverse g is subset of f inverse g that means what we are saying a subset of a interior and a interior subset of a then we say both are equal no if first set is subset of second second set is subset of first they we can say both are equal so therefore from this two we can write f inverse g is equal to f inverse g interior okay so let me remove the part which is not required so we will have some more space to write okay so by uh, joining or by using this two what we have got both sets are equal we have already written one result here if a and a interior are equal then that set is open we are getting the same thing f inverse g and its interior are equal that means f inverse g is open therefore f inverse g is open in xd it is open in domain we started with g is any open subset of y d dash and we proved that its inverse image is open subset of xd so therefore therefore we can write f from x to y is a continuous function since if you have let me mention it again there is one definition of continuous function that means if you have any open set in g its inverse image f inverse g is open in domain then we say the function f is continuous so we started with open subset of y d dash and we proved its inverse image is open in domain so therefore the function is continuous okay so in this way we completed the converse part also so make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you